Hi! In today's video, let's take a look at this ancient HP 7044A XY recorder. Hewlett Packard started making this series of recorder back in the 70s, and the manufacturing lasted well into the 80s. This unit I have here, I believe, was made sometime in the early 1980s. I still remember the days when I was a kid. I would sometimes go with my dad to his office during the weekends, and he would show me one of these plotters in action. I was quite fascinated with it. Now, almost 40 years later, I finally got my hands on one, which is quite exciting. This one came in in rather nice condition. It came shipped with uh, the original cardboard box and also came with all the accessories and operation manual, uh, which I will open up and show you guys later. But I think the uh, recorder itself was probably uh, likely used. As we can see, some of the mounting screws, which uh, later I'll show you, are uh, replaced with different ones. But all in all, this is uh, rather surprisingly clean, um, and the condition is rather nice, especially considering it's almost 40 years old. It does seem that the eBay seller whom I bought this one from has a few more of these, and they're all in new condition, and are relatively inexpensive, which is quite remarkable. So if you are interested in owning a piece of the history, uh, you can check it out on eBay. Just search for the uh, HP 7044A to see if they're still available. So before I flip this thing over and show you what's inside, and I do want to show you the uh, this accessory kit, and this one actually um, came in all the plotter pens, with all the pens, and a nice operating manual. And it says here, January 1980. So presumably this unit was made in 1980. One thing which is interesting, oh by the way, I had already opened this uh, because I wanted to play with it as soon as I received it. But anyway, it has all this uh, original uh, Oh, this thing is actually December 14th, 1982. So maybe this is just uh, around the time when it was shipped. Anyway, one thing, the first thing I noticed about these kind of old test gear is that for whatever reason, the, uh, the foam became very, very brittle. And uh, the foam here, uh, you know, you can just touch it and it will come apart. So I will show you here. Basically, it just became uh, kind of like... Uh, uh, powdery and also the plotter pens uh, stink a lot inside so I took them out uh, to dry later I will uh, uh, show you but uh, of course uh, the original plotter pens are all dried up so I had to do something like what uh, Curious Mark on his channel did uh, basically to replace well not really replace but to refill it with uh, uh, Sharpie uh, ink and the, the refilling process it was ra rather messy, so I actually left it in the other room. I uh, just did one of those, and uh, so later we'll see how it works. Anyway, so you can see we do have these, uh, uh, the spray this feels still full. This is the, uh, the slide wire cleaner. And we have this uh, adapter, which you know you can wire it out for the control signals. Anyway, so this is rather messy. I'm not gonna, uh, you know, as the, uh, the foam is all disintegrated. And uh, also the smell of the, uh, the ink pen uh, is horrible. Once you open it, the whole room smells like that uh, ink. So I'm not sure what was the, you know, material they, they used to make the ink, but uh, certainly it was not very pleasant. And anyway, Another thing you notice is that uh, the plastics over uh, the years have become quite brittle and uh, that manifests itself on those pen caps and also the plastic parts here. So some of the parts actually, uh, when it came it was fine, but after I turned it for a few rounds and it became cracked, so I had to glue it back. So that is something very interesting to see. I assume that a lot of the older plastics all exhibit the same problem, but uh, that clearly is a uh, an issue for long-term durability. I'm not sure if the plastics used current days are much better, but only time can tell. 
Okay, so now let me uh, flip this thing over and we'll see what is inside. Well, before I do that, let me just show you the control here. And it's quite simple. Basically, this thing is purely analog. It has two channels input. And here you have X, here you have Y, and you have different uh, uh, volts per division for the input signal. And here we have a line, on, off, a chart, hold, servo, standby, and on, and a pen lift. So that's all the other uh, function it has. So basically, the one thing nice about these kind of uh, older unit is uh, the input protocol. You don't really need to worry about whether it's HPIB or it's uh, some other type of uh, protocol. You just need to put in appropriate voltage. And once it's uh, uh, put in, you know, it's just... Uh, act as a analog, which it is an analog device. So basically you can plot uh, your analog signals in terms of the X and Y axis. So now let me flip it over and I will show you what's inside. And I just uh, removed all the screws actually. There were only one, two, uh, plus the four feet, those are the mounting screws. After I remove those, I can actually open it up. But uh, back here, as you can see, this uh, Hiller Packer made in USA, and we have this uh, parallel con connector, which is uh, not really a parallel port, but it's just to connect the, uh, the analog control signals out. And let's just uh, open it up and see what is inside. And as you can see, which is probably what you expected, Everything looks pretty simple and straightforward. And this is because this has no digital portion and everything is controlled analogly, in analog fashion. So let's uh, zoom it in a little bit and uh, take a closer look. And I will post some of the high resolution photos later on my website. So here, uh, which is the, the two independent channels, channel one and channel two. These are, as you can see from the layout, that this is a clearly uh, towards the top, the output stage, where there are two complementary transistors driving the uh, motor one way or another. And how the motor works is basically, this is really not a stepper motor, but rather a uh, just a simple motor with a uh, potentiometer. It's a working the same way as your servo motor does. And here we have some uh, um, op amps as you can see here, and some transistors. So these are uh, performing the preamps from each individual channel, and uh, then the output simply drives this uh, complementary pair. And uh, both channels, as you can see here, they are identical. So let's move on to the other side where we have our power supply. Let me just move the other uh, pot here. So we have our power supply and also we have this uh, board here. So now, if you look carefully, here we have a um, high voltage re rectification circuitry. Um, it's actually by these uh, four high voltage caps and some of the high voltage dials. And uh, towards the bottom, you can see two wires, which I will show you guys uh, in a photo later. But uh, what this is, is actually the uh, chart hold function. The chart is held uh, onto the top surface via electromagnetic, uh, sorry, electrostatic force, and which is done quite simply. Basically, this is just a high voltage generator, and I couldn't really find um, the information for the 7044A, but for other plotters in the same era, like the uh, 7015A, and you can clearly see that these are just a regular high voltage output. And the voltage is not that high actually. It's a plus 300 volts and minus 300 volts. So these are fed through this uh, uh, metal case to a metal plate in, uh, in a comb uh, fashion. So basically you have a positive negative stripes. And then on top of that you have a piece of insulator foam, uh, insulator plate. And then you can place your paper on top. So that's how this uh, paper hold uh, method works. And let's see what else is interesting. And, uh, ah, so when I look at the circuit board, uh, let's come back here again. So you can see this uh, star grounding point. And this is important because uh, this circuitry has uh, motors and you know has a noise inherent to the operation of this uh, circuit. 
and uh, but we also have a very high imp input impedance, which is um, a one mega ohm per channel. So uh, the ground is the choice of the ground is very, very important because uh, if you you know just uh, hook it up uh, uh, willy nilly, then you're going to run into the problem of uh, uh, common mode uh, noise get amplified via the amplifier, which is going to you know cause your motor to vibrate, uh, which is not something you want. So for the specification of this unit, actually, it downs to uh, the, the the accuracy is quite high. It's uh, you know in its full range, it's about one to two percent, um, so which is quite remarkable for an analog device. Now, the output uh, power transistors transistors are here, and uh, these are just uh, uh, again complementary output. And you can see these big caps. Actually, those are not really big. These are just a few thousand farads, um, not farads, a few thousand uh, microfarads, right? And uh, and it's just uh, you know 35 volts. So really, it's not that uh, uh, beefy. These are actually quite small. Uh, can be made quite small using today's technology, but back then these are huge. So that's about what we have here, and. Uh, the remaining stuff are all mechanical. And now you got to look at, uh, at it inside. Let's uh, flip it back over again and uh, see it, uh, it in operation. So because all, all the inputs are analog, to use it is actually quite simple. Basically you can put anything that outputs uh, analog signals into this plotter to obtain an XY image. But I thought it would be actually fun to uh, do a Lorenz attractor. And for those who do not know what the Lorenz attractor is, it's basically a uh, system of a uh, group of uh, uh, differential equations uh, that when solved, uh, it uh, exhibit a chaotic behavior, some chaotic behavior. And uh, we can do that in many different ways. So one system that we can do is using uh, some analog circuits using particularly some uh, analog multipliers with uh, op amps. Now I don't have the uh, AD633 which is the uh, one of the popular analog multipliers that uh, can be used and it's quite pricey and uh, also I don't have it on hand. So I thought okay I would just use a digital means to generate that. So for that I'm using an Arduino 2. And uh, one thing nice about this, you can also use a, you know, the standard uh, Arduino. But the, the reason it's good is it's actually having uh, two the DAC outputs. So, and the DACs are actually 12 bits. So that's actually, uh, you know, one would be X axis and the other would be Y -ax, uh, axis. So that is actually quite nice. So I already programmed it and to basically generate a uh, uh, the Lorentz attractor. And for the program, I will post it on my website and you can go take a look. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a 5 USB, uh, 5 volts USB power and I'm going to hold it in reset mode. And I'm going to turn on the, uh, the pen and everything so you're going to start uh, drawing. So let me uh, do that and actually let me first plug it in. Uh, I'm just going to plug in back here. So. And I, by the way, I haven't placed a pen up yet. So the original pen that came with the uh, with the plotter is actually like this. And as you can see, that oops, the uh, uh, plastic is actually quite brittle, and they already started ripping off. And uh, also, you know, after refilling the pen, it's kind of a messy situation here. And uh, but that said, the original pen is actually uh, quite light, the color, so it doesn't actually show up that well on camera. Um, what I'm going to do is actually, I just found that using this uh, this pen actually um, does a reasonable well job. This is a, let's see, it's a Papermate Ink Joy. And what this pen, uh, you know, is special is that it's, uh, if you look at, if we can focus here, so it's actually triangular in shape. So this one actually slides into the uh, the pen holder very well. So that's what I'm going to use. So now let me first turn on the uh, the power, and I will activate the uh, chart hold. 
So hang on, just we readjust the paper a little bit. So I had already adjusted the uh, the sensitivity of this to be 0.1 uh, volt per inch, but then I tweak, uh, tweaked it using the fine adjustment so that the Arduino output, which is 0 to 3.3 .3 volts roughly, and can kind of capture the chart. Uh, let me just take this piece of uh, plastic away. Okay. So anyway, so that is the setup, and uh, now I'm going to uh, put a chart hold on so that the chart has moved now. And uh, now I'm going to install this pen here. So the pen can just slide in here and uh, uh, like so. And uh, I can press it. And it's actually still not touching it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the pen down. So now it's actually pressed onto the page. OK. So we're ready, I'm going to press the reset button on this uh, Arduino so that the program will start from beginning. And uh, here we go. So now I'm turning on the servo and uh, ready, three, two, one, go. So now we actually started to uh, join the Lorenz uh, tractor. And as you can see, uh, the speed is relatively slow. And the speed is actually controlled by uh, the Arduino when I deliberately made it slow so that um, we can draw it uh, you know darker and also more clearly when it's faster moving uh, what happened is that uh, especially when it's using ink uh, the ink doesn't tend to fly that well uh, flow that well so it's not as uh, uh, clean the drawing or dark as it should be Now you can see the shape is being traced nicely and uh, it can go on forever like so. So at some point I might uh, build a purely analog version of this so that uh, um, you know, it just uh, is more fun that way. But for now, you can see, uh, you can look on my website for the code that I use to generate this curve and plot onto the uh, XY plotter. And uh, you actually can do this on an oscilloscope uh, if you just change the output to make it uh, go faster, because what happens otherwise, the uh, persistence on the scope won't allow you to see the actual curve. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This curve can be drawn like this forever and it will never stop. And that's uh, the beauty of this uh, chaotic behavior of this uh, Lorentz equations. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I will catch up with you next time.